Is an all-metal heat brake really better than the standard heat brake that's on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone? It really is, and I'll explain why. And I'll show you how to install this one on an Ender 3 Neo on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Creality3dofficial.com by ComGirl. In a previous video, I showed how to install an all-metal heat break from Slice Engineering on an Ender 3 V2. I'll put a link to that video up here. Well, this is an Ender 3 V2 Neo, and it requires a different heat break, and Slice Engineering doesn't have one that fits this machine. But I did find one online on Amazon. On a tip from a viewer, I found this heat break on Amazon that fits the CR6. But when I compared it to the one in the Neo, it matched quite well. In fact, the dimensions matched exactly. When I measured the Neo one and compared it to these dimensions, they were spot on. So the Ender 3 Neo V2 and the Ender 3 Neo should both work with this, or basically any machine that has this new hot end style. Before I show you how to install this on the Ender 3 Neo, let me explain why this is better than the stock heat break that's on any Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone. And just about every Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone, the heat break allows the PTFE tubing to go all the way through to the nozzle. What's the problem with that? Well, it gets to be the same temperature as the nozzle. So as soon as you get above 230 degrees, this PTFE tubing starts to break down and lose lubrication. And that's when PLA will stick to the end of it, other filaments may stick, and that's when you get a partial clog. Now you can cut that last like 10, 20 millimeters off and reuse it, but it's just going to burn out again. So what you want is an all-metal heat break that only allows the PTFE tubing to go so far, and then it has a channel just for the filament to go through that's all-metal but smooth and allows it to flow. And that's what an all-metal heat break does. Here they are side by side, and you can see that the all-metal one has a smaller tube just above the threads. In this cutaway view of the all-metal heat break, you can see the PTFE tubing is blocked 15 millimeters into it, and then the smaller diameter tube continues only allowing filament to go through the nozzle. On the left is the original heat break, and then on the right is the all-metal heat break. And you can see the PTFE tubing, which is in blue, goes all the way down to the nozzle on the left, but stops way short of the nozzle on the right. Here they are side by side, and you can clearly see that the all-metal one on the right will block the PTFE tubing and only allow filament to go through. But it's more than just blocking the PTFE tubing. That small tube actually forms a heat break. See, metal absorbs heat the same way a sponge absorbs water. And you can have a small sponge, and it can only absorb so much water before it saturates. It won't absorb any more water. Well, a smaller piece of metal, the smaller diameter, will saturate with heat, therefore blocking any more heat from going up into the upper tube. So it forms a break between the real hot heat block that you're heating up with the nozzle and the tube that's holding the PTFE tubing and the cool filament. How much does it block? Well, not 100%, but let's actually measure this with a thermocouple and see how much it reduces it. I'm going to start with a heat block and the original heat break from the Ender 3. I'll heat the hot end up to 200 degrees C. I'm going to put the thermocouple into the heat break all the way down to the threads. And after a little bit, it heats up to 198 degrees C. Now I'm going to position the thermocouple right at the top of the smaller diameter section of the original heat break. And after a little bit, 160 degrees C. So it is reducing the temperature by about 40 degrees C. Now at the same 200 degrees C, I'm going to put the thermocouple at the top of the small diameter tube of the all-metal heat break. And I only get to 120 degrees C, so that smaller diameter is doing a much better job. And if I go into where the PTFE tubing stops, I'm only seeing 105 degrees C, so that PTFE tubing is not even getting close to its breakdown temperature. Now add this new style heat sink on top of that with its big fins. It acts like a radiator and will get rid of that heat even more. And then with the fan blown across it, it keeps the filament nice and cool. So this all-metal heat break with its smaller diameter tube and the fact that it lifts the PTFE tubing off the nozzle is going to do a much better job than this original heat break on the Ender 3. So now let me show you how to install this with some simple tools. I'm going to show you how to do it on my Ender 3 V2 Neo, but it's the same process for the standard Ender 3 Neo. I'm going to use this thumb ratchet, which I normally use with a 6mm socket to remove nozzles, like I'll do here. 
but I'm also going to use it with this 25 piece hex set which makes it easy to remove the screws. The first step is to remove the screw at the back that holds the fan shroud. This requires a 2 millimeter hex bit. Next I'll use a flathead screwdriver to pop off the snaps on both sides of the shroud so I can lift that right off. I'll remove the rubber grommet that's covering the heat block. Now I'll preheat the hot end to about 200 degrees C. I'll remove the filament and then use the ratchet to remove the nozzle. There's two screws that hold the heat block to the heat sink. These require a 1.5 millimeter hex bit to remove them. There's two grub screws on the front that hold the heat break in place. I'm not going to take them all the way out yet. I'm just going to loosen them up. And now I want to remove the PTFE tubing so I pull off the blue clip, push down on the lock, and pull the PTFE out. Now I'm going to remove the two screws that hold the hot end in place, and then I'll finish removing those two grub screws, and then I can pull this heat sink right off the heat break. While it was still hot, I just used the pliers to twist the heat break out. It came out pretty easy. Now I'll screw in the all metal heat break just until the threads are at the top of the block. Then I'll put in the nozzle, but not all the way. Then I'll tighten up the heat break and then tighten the nozzle against it. Now I'll slide the heat sink back onto the new heat break. Then I'll install the two screws that connect the heat block to the heat sink. Now I can reinstall the two grub screws and tighten them against the heat break. And once this is done, now I can cool this thing off by clicking on cool down. Once this is cooled down, then I can use the two screws and remount this thing back to the bracket on the printer. I'll reinstall the PTFE tubing and put the lock back in place. And the only thing left now is to put the shroud back on, snap it in place, and reinstall the screw at the back. And this thing's back together, ready to print. Now I'll just rerun auto level, set the Z offset, and make our first print. And here it is. came out beautiful. Perfect chip cube. If you're thinking about getting an Ender 3 Neo, Creality3dofficial.com by Comgrow has the full lineup of Creality machines, including filament, and you can even buy in bulk and build your print farm right from Creality3dofficial.com. And if you want to get the latest Ender 3 Neo series, they've got those in stock as well with auto level. These printers work really well. So visit Creality3dofficial.com by Comgrow. These low cost printers have gotten better, especially the Neo line now with auto level, metal extruder, and much better function all the way around. And our firmware has improved. So now the only thing really left, I wish they'd just start putting an all-metal heat break on these machines from the start. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here. The Filament Friday.